Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be here and talk about the transition towards sustainable cities, opportunities and constraints. My name is Jacqueline Kramer and I'm working at the Utrecht Sustainability Institute, as has been said. Let me continue by a slide which has been already addressed at this conference a couple of times the urgency of the problem of sustainable cities. An increasing concentration of the world population lives in uh, urban regions, and particularly in mega cities. And that in 2007, there were about 50% of the people, and uh, in 2050, it is expected to be 75%. A transition is necessary to build resilience and guarantee the quality of life in the cities. And that implies that the present structures and systems have to be changed because they are inadequate at the moment. And in my view, sustainability can be a unifying concept and is not a fad. What is the challenge we are facing? Well, at present, cities uh, encounter a lot of problems. Let me summarize them very quickly and then go to the examples. The mobility in cities is problematic. This morning it was mentioned also a couple of times. Furthermore, due to climate change, cities have to cope with climate adaptation in terms of heat stress, water scarcity, and flooding. And they also have to tackle climate mitigation. Moreover, growing scarcity of both energy and resources, um, they uh, really increase the urgency towards a more uh, sustainable alternative in terms of changing fossil fuels into more renewable energy uh, sources and get away with our throwaway society. The concentration of uh, people in the city is, of course, also a problem leading to environmental pro uh, pollution issues like the greenhouse gas emissions, the uh, air and water quality problems, and noise problems. And not to forget, that also leads to socio-economic tensions. Urbanization, though, can also offer opportunities. And I like to stress that point in order to make our world a more sustainable world. We don't have to start from scratch. We already have experience in the Netherlands, but also in many other countries with sustainable technologies. We can build an energy producing house, see the left above. We also can use the traditional water bins to collect rainwater. And we introduced the electric car and also um, put in place the first charging points, not only in the Netherlands, but also elsewhere in the world. However, all these examples are standalone examples. And what we need to do is to move from the exciting pilots to large-scale initiatives. And that means that we have to move towards integrated urban development with sustainability as the unifying concept. Thus, urban planning and sustainable innovations go hand in hand. And when I talk about sustainable innovations, I talk about finding a proper balance between four aspects. The economic viability of the city and vitality of the city, the intelligent logistics and sustainable mobility, the ecological sustainability in terms of minimizing the ecological footprint, and not to forget the social participation, the cohesion and also the integration. Well, when I talk about sustainable innovations, 
I don't talk only about the technology. I want to stress that in order to make technology work, we need to include the end user as early as possible in the process. Take the example of the city of the sun in Heer Hugo Waard, a city in the Netherlands. We put in place solar energy in this neighborhood together with smart grids. But if the citizens don't understand the system, what they actually do here, but if they don't understand the system, it is not going to work. Similarly, what we call the Wadis in Leidse Rijn, also a neighborhood in this case of Utrecht, Wadis are actually very smart water systems, um, drainage systems that collect rain water um, and in the subsoil it is biologically cleaned and reused again. Well, here again, if the citizens don't understand this system and wash their cars uh, at the wrong place, the whole system will not work. So, my first point is that it is very important to involve the end users as soon as possible in the process. Make them partner in the design and the decision making. And create joint ownership through participation, for instance, in local energy initiatives. And make sure that they understand what the technology is all about by visualizing the new concept and by storytelling. And the social media are, of course, fantastic to do that. Sustainable urban development is really an ambitious target to reach. We really need to integrate sustainability from the start when we design uh, the uh, new buildings and we need to keep sustainability in place also in the later phases, in the phases of production, building, managing, de uh, demolishing and pulling down, but also bringing then the resources back into the cycle. And that is what is meant by this picture. This is an example of a uh, virtual city called Circle City in, uh, in Rotterdam. And I'm actually uh, the uh, virtual mayor of this city. Uh, and the idea is to promote a uh, cooperation with different partners in the chain. In the case of Circle City, uh, there was a social housing uh, corporation, a cement pro uh, producer, a uh, municipal cleansing uh, department and uh, the demolition farm and together they managed to close the circle. And this example we want to promote also elsewhere in the Netherlands. Besides taking into account the whole chain from cradle to cradle, it is also important to develop um, areas where not only uh, the surface level, but also what is needed in the subsoil uh, is attuned to each other. Here is an example of a uh, big renovation in the area of the central station in uh, Utrecht, the area where my institute is located and many of my researchers are also involved in this project. And the whole idea about this project is, is that uh, the renovation of the station, of the buildings, of the offices, of the houses, are combined with an, uh, a, a complete re reconstruction of the subsoil. It is cleaned by a new technology called bio-washing machine, and that is a cold and heat storage system and by the circulation of the groundwater in the system, we managed to clean the, the subsoil and the groundwater much quicker biologically than uh, when we just leave it uh, by itself. So, that are all kinds of examples that integration of uh, 
uh, various aspects of urban planning is very crucial. And what is the added value? Well, we can improve the efficiency tremendously in the whole building process and therefore also uh, uh, achieve enormous cost savings in terms of uh, less failure cost and also uh, less double work. Moreover, the societal merits are uh, very high due to the acceptance of responsibility over the whole life cycle uh, from cradle to cradle by the industry involved. And furthermore, we can expect an increased satisfaction uh, of the end users. And finally, and that's of course also very important, higher achievements in terms of sustainability. What does it mean with respect to the governance of integrated? Uh, um, I see that I still have less time than I expected, three minutes more. Okay. Um, there are uh, several actors involved um, and all have a role. It is not just a process steered by the government. All actors have to be involved. The Knowledge Institute should stress not only technology, but also they should uh, provide expertise on the transition and the organization of the change and the economic uh, aspects of the whole transition. The uh, industry should take the lead and have the guts to do it in a consortium of different uh, uh, companies under a strict and tight control. And furthermore, they have to take responsibility over the whole chain. The financial sector and also uh, the legal advisors, they can support the new financial arrangements that are necessary. And finally, the citizens, well, they uh, are instead of just observers, they are really participants. And the government, well, in Europe, the government has, has a lot of problems nowadays with the budget cuts and so on, but still they have a task, especially at local level. The cities uh, are very important in making the change. They can help the companies to really, uh, uh, by really supporting them uh, in fulfilling the mission of the transition towards uh, sustainable urban regions. They can remove barriers, they can guarantee a level playing field, and they can promote creativity and innovation. And, very important, they can include sustainability in procurement uh, requirements. But they have to leave room for the companies to really make the right choices. They, the government, formulates the objectives, but it is up to the companies to find the right means. And finally, it's important to make sure that the execution of the overall integral project um, is in the hands of a strong project team with a robust mandate. mandate sorry. Well, and what does it mean? When we work like that, we can really achieve sustainable urban development. And if we are able to do that, we can achieve a lot of opportunities and societal merits. Thank you very much.